One of the reasons to use Apple Home as your way to control your smart home is they make it very easy to control your smart home in a lot of different places across all of your Apple devices. And so in this video, I wanna go through all 23, as I count them, different ways that you can control your Apple smart home devices or accessories, as they're often called. If you're new here, I'm Eric Wielander. I've been an app developer on Apple platform since 2011 and building out my smart home here on YouTube since 2018. So if you're into Apple or smart home tech, consider subscribing. And we're gonna go rapid fire through all these different examples. First on the list is of course, you can use a lot of your Apple devices to issue Siri voice commands, and those can control your smart home, like, talking to your iPhone. I often just mash down on the side button on my iPhone to talk to it and give it commands for my smart home. Number two on the list, you can open the home app on your iPhone or a bunch of other Apple devices like your iPad, Mac, Apple Watch, and, and Apple Vision Pro, and you're able to tap on an accessories icon to let's say turn the lights on or off. Number three on the list, you can in that same home app, choose a particular scene that you want to use, and that will set a bunch of different lights or other accessories to a way you want to set up a particular scene with one tap. Now, taking automation a step further, of course, we'll talk more about automations inside the Home app in a minute, but you can use the Shortcuts app to use the Control Home step to add any kind of control for your smart home into a shortcut that might be doing other things as well. Now, another one right there on your phone as well as your iPad is Control Center. And this has gotten a lot better in iOS 18 because you can now customize the layout of Control Center and put just the scenes and accessories you want there, as well as continuing to have options for Apple to suggest ones like they have in past releases. And I recently made a video all about this feature. Now, another feature on newer iPhones as well as Apple Watch Ultras is the action button. So you can use the action button to trigger a shortcut, which then can control your Apple Home to, let's say, set a particular scene. Next is putting a widget on your home screen, which can either trigger a scene or control an accessory. Standby mode also has widgets, and I'm splitting this out into number eight here because it's a really different context. You put your iPhone on a MagSafe charger in landscape, it's locked, and then you can set it up to have a home widget there with the same kinds of scene and accessory controls. Another one on your iPhone is you can use the accessibility back tap gesture to trigger a shortcut that controls your smart home. Now, AirPods is another great way I use to control Siri, and I consider this number 10 or a separate one on the list, and that's because you can just talk to the air and your AirPods will hear you. You don't have to have, let's say, a HomePod or something else nearby, and that's also using the smarts of your iPhone and iPad to do that so you can more easily do things like chaining commands together and stuff that often a HomePod struggles to understand, but some of your more advanced Apple devices like your iPhone can quickly get. Another one on Apple devices is if you have a magic keyboard for iPad or another kind of keyboard attached your iPad that can trigger your voice assistant, you can just talk directly to it by holding down on the microphone button on that keyboard. Number 12 on the list is there are a handful of third-party apps that allow you to control your smart home in your Mac's menu bar. So you can choose a scene or accessory right from there. And there are third-party apps that enable control in all kinds of different places, including widgets on your iPhone, et cetera. But this is the one I wanted to call out because it, in my view, enables an additional way to control your Apple smart home. Number 13 on the list is using Siri on Apple TV with the Apple TV remote. You just have to hold down the side button of your Apple TV remote, and then you can issue commands to Siri to set anything in your smart home, just as maybe then right after that, you can use it to look up the movie you wanna watch. Another place right there on tvOS, number 14 on my list is Control Center. So you can hold down on the TV button on your remote in Apple TV, and then it will bring up Control Center where there's an option for home controls as well as viewing any HomeKit compatible cameras you have there so you can see the live feed and check on if someone's at your front door or what that noise was you just heard. Moving to the Apple Watch, you can have widget suggestions 
with a home control that's something Apple suggests based on your context of the time of day and where you are that you might want to control in your smart home. And you can also add smart home controls to a complication on Apple Watch. Now, can you believe we're at number 17 and we haven't yet mentioned the HomePod and HomePod Mini? Of course, you can use a HomePod or HomePod Mini to control your smart home by using the wake words to then issue a voice command. Number 18 on the list is with that same HomePod or HomePod Mini, you can also press and hold on the top to wake up the voice assistant and talk to it that way. This can be handy if you've needed to disable the wake word on particular home pods because you don't want younger children controlling your smart home by talking to your home pods that way. Number 19 on the list, moving outside of Apple hardware, you can use a HomeKit button and a bunch of different accessory makers have HomeKit or Matter compatible buttons which then can be linked to particular scenes or other automations inside of Apple Home. I love putting buttons at the entry to various rooms and then mapping the single press, double press, and long press commands to different scenes or automations in those particular rooms. And I'll be talking more about that in future videos. Number 20 on this list, if you have an Ecobee thermostat, you can talk to Siri on that Ecobee thermostat. Number 21 on the list, you can trigger a sensor automation like a door or motion sensor. So you can set up one of these sensors that you add to your Apple Home and then when a door opens or there's motion by a motion sensor, then maybe lights turn on or if the doors close, the lights turn off. You can do all kinds of details there with simple sensors. Number 22 on the list is that you can control another accessory and have that trigger an automation. So you don't necessarily need to go out and buy sensors to start automating your Apple Home. You can have some kind of automation where if the lights in this room turn on, then also turn on the lights in this room. Or if the lights in this room turn off, then also turn off the lights in this other room. And 23 on my list is another simple way to get started with automations, which is if a particular time of day occurs, which could be an exact time during the day, or it could be sunrise or sunset, then do an automation. I haven't for years had to think about turning the lights in front of my house on or off because they just come on at sunset and then turn back off in the morning when the sun rises. And if some of these automation ideas sound interesting to you, I have a video explaining all the basics of how to get started with Apple Home automations showing somewhere here on the screen. Another thing you'll wanna have set up pretty early on in using Apple Smart Home Tech is an Apple Home Hub, which is either a HomePod, HomePod Mini, or an Apple TV that's registered in your smart home in a particular room. It might already be set up for you automatically, but I have a video also on the screen explaining all those details. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thanks again so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.